Manchester United fans, we can rejoice. It seems as though somebody within the organization has a brain because we signed Bruno Fernandes. It seemed like for a little bit that it was a sure thing. Then it seemed like for a while that it was not going to happen at all. But from when we were in the summer and it was almost seeming, it seemed like a done deal. And then all of a sudden, the May United board decided that Bruno Fernandes gave away the ball too much. Uh, and that Jesse Lingard and Andreas Pereira didn't give the ball away too much. So we suck it out with them rather than buying Bruno Fernandes. Thankfully... We have come to our senses, and we've actually finalized the deal. Uh, pictures of him with Ole today, pictures of him in, in a Manchester United shirt. That is the confirmation that we needed. We can certainly rejoice to this. This is what I would call a perfect signing, uh, meaning that for the position, like it's perfect in the sense that we absolutely needed a player in that position, and it is a proper player for that position. Um, like, start of the season, we needed a right wing. We got Dan James. That I would not consider a perfect signing, even though I like Dan James. It was not a perfect signing. Signing Aaron wan to play right back. Now, that was a perfect signing. You get a guy who is going to fill in that role, and he is going to do a great job. You know what he's going to do. Week in, week out, you can rely on him. That's what I think we are going to get with Bruno Fernandes. I know that recently some marquee signings have not panned out the way we would have liked. Um, maybe you could look at Lukaku as one that didn't quite get to the exact one we, we wanted. Alexis Sanchez certainly did not pan out the way we wanted it to. But this, I'm very optimistic about this signing. Uh, Bruno Fernandes is... 25 years old, not in his prime yet, was captain of, of Sporting Lisbon, was playing tremendously there. He's a bit of a midfield maestro. He can get involved in attack. He scores goals. He sets up goals. It is absolutely what we need because we have two tens in Lingard and Pereira who cannot do, well, really any of those things I just listed, to be honest. They don't really do anything. But this is the first step in the resolution. This is by no means, this is not it. This can't be everything there is to it. it like, I, I pray that this is not everything. It, like, if your car has, um, needs new brakes, has a couple flat tires, needs a new engine, and then you just buy an engine, well, the whole thing isn't fixed. You just have a new engine. You still need to worry about the other stuff. So we just, we purchased an engine, we purchased a very nice engine, but what's the use of that if you have two flat tires and brakes that don't work? Well, we need to sort that out, and I think that what needs to be sorted out is another holding mid slash number eight and a center back. I was saying earlier that we needed a left back, but I'm pretty content with Williams at the moment. If Williams can keep on this upward trajectory, Looks better every time he's on the field. I think we'll be fine with him. Maybe we could do with a backup because I'm not. I do not rate Luke Shaw. He, um, oh, how on earth, he won United Player of the Season last year. Will 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 baffle me and puzzle me till the end of my days. But let's talk about what I think. What I think we need, which is those positions I was just talking about. Not really a left back anymore. We're, we we more. We need a midfielder and a defender much more than we need a left back. And when it comes to strikers, Ole's been talking about getting a striker. Um, thanks, I, I better not be Islam Slimani as the striker that we signed. I, I'm very happy that that rumor has started to die down. But we could use a striker. Well, we need a midfielder and a, and a, def, a center back a little bit more. And I, I don't really want a striker because... I feel like it would take away a lot of opportunity from Mason Greenwood, Martial to play up top, and it would cut into Rashford's playtime if you have to play Martial on the left a little bit to balance his playtime out when he can't start up top. I'm pretty content with Greenwood, Martial, and Rashford uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, problem is fitness because Martial doesn't really stay fit, and we're seeing fragilities in Rashford's fitness in the moment. Greenwood remains to be seen because he's still very young, but I want to roll with those guys as much as possible, which is why midfield defenders. So I want to list 
who I think should be top priorities coming into this, coming into this summer and what we need. I'm going to start with midfielders. I think we need a midfielder a little bit more than we need a center back. So if we had to get one or the other, I'd say a midfielder. But three names that I could see realistically coming to Manchester United in the summer for the right price. I'm looking at guys like Ruben Neves on Wolverhampton, Thomas Partey on Atletico Madrid, and Declan Rice on West Ham. And uh, for a lot of you Premier League fans, we know a lot already about Ruben Neves. We've seen what he's done against Manchester United, some of the amazing goals. But the, the goals are just ancillary to the product that is Ruben Neves. We know his ability to pass, his ability to defend, uh, leadership qualities. He was, I believe, Porto's youngest captain in their history, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, still relatively young, at, well, still very young at 22 years old, actually. Lots of room to develop. Uh, can definitely be part of our system. I, I Like I've been saying in other, other episodes, that we need to rebuild and not just try to win right now. Let's Let's not try to win next year. Let's not try to win the year after that. But maybe in three years, we can really look at, you know, challenging for Premier Leagues. You know, getting involved in, in Champions League runs. Making pushes for trophies uh, uh, that are a little bit more realistic than they are right now. Let's rebuild. And I think that Bruno Fernandes is a guy that was, which, in which that we can look at that and think, okay, we can build off this guy. We can build off guys like Rashford, Greenwood, uh, Williams. McTominay, Fred has been looking great. And, you know, a supplement with another midfielder would be tremendous. Another one I'm looking at, like I said, Thomas Partey. Tough tackling, like good on the ball, just physical presence at the holding mid position. Uh, has done some play at right back. He's very agile, very good movement. Uh, I think he would definitely fit the mold of the Premier League. Uh, he's only 26 years old. He's just getting into his prime now. Made made a lot of strides at uh, Atletico Madrid. Uh, underrated part of his game is his his, his ball skill. He's tremendous in the ball. Uh, I talked about his defensive ability, but he is he's pretty skillful. He is good on the ball. This would be a very very good signing for Manchester United. Um, obviously, these are all like uh, you know on me. I'm just throwing these names out, but I think these are guys who are realistically attainable for Manchester United and guys I think that the their their parent clubs will not be too closed up on selling. They'd be open to it, I think, for the right price. Um, especially um May United coming for them. Uh third one I was talking about was Declan Rice. Uh he's been playing very well for West Ham over the last couple seasons. He might be a bit of a bright spot for them. Uh, just at the tender age of 21, lots and lots of impro- improvement available for Declan Rice. I think he's going to be a staple in the England squad uh, for years to come. I think he'll end up traveling with them to Euro 2020 at 21 years old. He's excellent at holding mid, great at tackling, has played center back for West Ham before. Um, could improve go- himself going forward, but like I said, could fit into that rebuild. Like We can't be buying players who right, aren't are already in their prime and are already like at the level. We need players who are going to build into a system together with Ole. Uh, I'm fully backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well right now. If you are listening and you haven't listened to my Ole Out podcast, which I did last week, I highly recommend that. There was um, a lot of very positive feedback about that one. Go check that out if you haven't. Fully back Ole. Give, give, stay patient with him. Let's all build together. Let's have an entire team building with Oli. I think that is the key to success. So those three names are, are on my wish list. If I had to pick one, probably picking Ruben Neves because he's, he's very young, a year older than Declan Rice, but he, his game is a lot more polished already. And Ruben Neves has Champions League experience. Declan Rice has low-table low Premier League experience, uh, to be quite frank about it. Ruben Neves is obviously much better going forward than Declan Rice. If I had to have one, Ruben Neves. But I'd be pretty satisfied with, with any of those three coming in in the summer. Another two names, a bit of wild card picks. I don't think we could land them, but it's possible. Wilfred Ndidi, most underrated player in the Premier League, He's starting to get his recognition now. One of the best tacklers, one of the best at intercepting, tremendous at reading the game defensively. And Yuri Tillemans, also on Leicester. Those two would be a little bit harder because Leicester are, 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 
are performing so well right now, it might be hard to lure them away from those clubs. But the three names I listed first, Neves, Rice, and Partey, I think are reasonably attainable and players that should be definitely looked at. Looking at center backs now, which is the second position that we need, I, I think it's a little bit harder to find high quality center backs in this in this era of football and and finding some that are going to be interested in joining your team first of all and being able to like I, I, I found it hard to find guys who could who fit like the midfields I found it pretty easy to list them off but center backs you know thinking about it I, I thought it'd be a I thought it was a little more difficult to, to pick them out but I'll, I'll say the names that I have and I think that they they are generously a little bit attainable I think it's possible first name on the list probably my first choice of a signing Dejot Upamecano if you don't know him he plays for Leipzig in the German league Leipzig I um, believe are in first in the Bundesliga right now not 100 sure they're either first or near the top but physical presence at the back decently decently uh, skilled on the ball uh, he's been linked with Arsenal before I think United could genuinely make a push this guy, and he would be a great fit for the Premier League, I think. I, I, he would be very good for us. Um, could build in. Like I said, when you players, we're going to build into the system that we have. We're in rebuild mode. Let's rebuild with with everybody. Let's not just, you know, only some positions we rebuild, some positions we already have our guy. Let's try to rebuild with these types of players. I think Upa Meccano is the best fit for that, that mold we're trying to cre create. Uh, second one is off Borussia Dortmund, Manuel Akanji. I think that he's another one who is very good on the ball, um, tough tackler. He's only 24 years old. I think another one that United should be looking at has been very good for Dortmund since he joined them. I I've been impressed with what I've seen from him. I don't watch a ton of Bundesliga or German football, but you know, from what I've seen and what I've heard, there are great things about this guy. Another one I think that's possible to lure away is Presnel Kimpembe off PSG. Scored against May United in the Champions League last year. But at only 24 years old, it's hard to you know hard to find playtime at a team like PSG. They could definitely look to replace a guy like him. I don't think it'd be too hard to replace him. I think that this is a guy we could definitely look at starting for us um uh, left-footed can we'll be able to play alongside harry Maguire. I, I i think that these three are the bigger ones that are possible to sign um maybe you disagree but those to me look like three potential signings that are, are attainable and i think upa Meccano should be the first choice going into the summer I think he could build up to be a high quality center back he's already very good at 21 years old that would be my number one option outside picks as well for this Willie Orban also off Leipzig he has been quite um, quite impressive uh, over the course of the last couple seasons and like I said uh, Leipzig are doing so well in the Bundesliga but they don't have the high you know stature of a club but he is 27 so <clears throat> So maybe not that one as much as the others, but that's that's potential. I can see that maybe happening. Uh, last one is Jose Maria Jimenez off of Atletico Madrid, but again, that's gonna be really tough to pull off. That that would require a lot of money, and I'm I'm not sure I'd prefer him over the other ones. But that's just a potential name I thought of. More interested in the other guys like Upa Makano, Lukanji, and Kempembe. However, uh, I will talk now because obviously there there isn't a ton of depth near the front of the pitch for United, so. I feel like in regards to our young core or the, the younger players coming up, like Tahith Chong and Angel Gomes, I'm honestly very disappointed with what I've seen from them so far this season. I don't think that they're complete busts, but I think they can be they can be great players. I just don't really... I'm a little worried from what I've been seeing. Tahith Chong has not taken the leaps I thought he would. To be honest, to be to be completely honest, how I feel right now about Chong is that he'll cap out at a rotation winger at a top tier Dutch team like a PSV or a Feyenoord, 
could be like you know guys starting most games there on the wing or a lower tier Premier League team like Crystal Palace starting on the wing for them I can't I do I for I just haven't seen the strides from him this season like he's going to be a complete success at Manchester United uh he's been getting his chances too it's not like it's not like they aren't playing him it's not it's not like that he hasn't been given the opportunity he's been given loads of opportunity to fit into our system but it just hasn't really panned out and the same for Angel Gomes I mean he hasn't had nearly as many chances um so that one's a bit different than Chong but I, I get that he's only 20 years old and all but I need to see a little bit more going forward for him. From what I see right now, it's not quite at the level I was expecting this season, especially given the amount of playtime. But I think we should still try with him to get him at the level he needs to be. I think he needs just uh, a couple of goals to get some confidence going. But I like his style of play. And I think it's possible that he will pan out into a high quality player. But I just don't see it right now, unfortunately. Next one I was talking about, Angel Gomes, 19 years old. Just he's really small. That's the problem. I think he's like 5'4. He he just he just needs to pick up a bit on his quickness and decisions because he, he can't rely on his physicality to bail him out. He has shown spurts, but again, I need to see a little more out of him. I was expecting a bit better from what I've seen this season, but these guys are very young. They could pan out to be starters for Manchester United. Just right now. Haven't seen spells of it. Uh, you know, obviously youngsters are going to be a bit inconsistent, but you need to see those spells of magic off of them in order to have faith in them in the future. Uh, not saying that they're going to be bust. Not saying that they that you know my to his Chong vision is going to happen. I'm just saying that from what I've seen right now, that's what it looks to me like is going to happen. I just need to be see a bit better from there. Um, last thing I will touch on in this in this episode is the goalkeeping situation because. Dean Henderson has been phenomenal for Sheffield United this season. And if you don't know, he is a Manchester United player. That is his parent club. He's on loan at Sheffield. And he's really pushing to get... I think he's definitely in the England squad. He's potentially the number one England goal, goalkeeper. I don't think he'll start at Euro 2020 just because Jordan Pickford um, kind of knows how to play the system of Gareth Southgate, and he's done so successfully in the past. But can you name me another like another two goalies better than Dean Henderson? Like, Nick Pope should be in the squad. Definitely not Jack Butland. Tom Heen's been injured, and even if he wasn't, I would probably still take Dean Henderson above him. Dean Henderson's probably been the best British goalkeeper in the... Or the best British goalkeeper. He just probably won't start I just he has to be in Euro, at going to Euro 2020 and I was having a conversation about this yesterday um what are United going to do with him because they have De Gea they have the best backup in the world in Sergio Romero and you got Dean Henderson coming up and, and honestly I think in two years Dean Henderson needs to be United's number one and I know De Gea is is you know, even though he's regressed a bit, he's still one of the best in the world. But how can you afford to give up a decade of great goalkeeping in, in Dean Henderson? Like, we, like, the way he's been playing, you won't have to worry about that position for another 10 years. And if you let him go and De Gea, as he's getting older, regress even more, and Romero's not getting any, any younger either, well, what happens? Like, how hard is it to find a great goalkeeper? Like, Arsenal have been trying to do it for years. They kind of have their guy in Leno, but... Again, he's he's pretty inconsistent. They could probably they probably wish they had a bit better. And I think that we can't afford to lose Dean Henderson. That guy has to be our number one in the next couple of years, or he's gonna go somewhere where he is gonna be the number one. And it's tough for me to say about Romero, but like <laughs> Dean Henderson should probably be the backup next season. And I love Sergio Romero and the services he's done for Manchester United being the backup and being so good at that role. I just like Dean Henderson so much that you can't afford to to let that kind of talent go. He's so talented as a goalkeeper. 
only at the age of 22. You you cannot afford to let that slip out of your grasp because I, I know he'll flourish if he goes to another bigger club in England because I know somebody will pick him up and somebody will get him. So it's a difficult, difficult situation, difficult decision to make, but I think it's one that has to be made and potentially, you know, get your money for De Gea in the next couple of years and get Dean Henderson in the number one spot and build through him as well. Again, keep going back to that point. Build through the players you have. Don't buy players who are already the best that they will be, like Alexis Sanchez. Get players who are going to get better once they come to your club because you know they will improve into the culture, into the system, and they will be able to intertwine with the values of the club splendidly i think that is the way to go i think soul star is the way of the future but let's look let's look, go through the names again neves party rice one of those three in midfield upamakano akanji kempembe as a defender um hopefully chong and gomes start to pick up their game start to elevate because they are young they can do it and get dean henderson involved some way get him get him in the club after this season or at least uh, one more year of loan and reassure him. Okay, after this, you're 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 one of the guys here. You know what I mean? But that will wrap up this episode. If you're still here, thank you for listening to the Amateur Hour Sports Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at Amateur PDC. We post every single day. We'll keep you up episodes there. Uh, merch is out. It's been out for a while. Go purchase some merch there. Link in bio. Um, um, everything is in the everything is in the description. That, I, that I'm giving here. You can subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, and as usual, like I was saying, we post every single day. Keep coming back for the daily content. We will see you again tomorrow.